Hello, everybody. Looks like the gauge says it's empty. Let's take a walk into the kitchen and see what's in the fridge today, guys. Hello everybody, thanks for stopping by Great Food Reviews today. Uh, I have done uh, one of these guys' beer. This is uh, Revolution Brewing's beer. This is their uh, Double Fist, which is a double pale ale. And the beer sites categorize or, or put these together in different categories. Uh, beer Abbott's got listed as an American Double slash Imperial IPA. This is not an IPA, guys. This is a double pale ale. And over to Rate Beer, they've got it listed as an American Strong Ale. <laughs> don't get me started. I don't know why they just can't list it as a double pale ale. And don't classify it with an IPA. It does not have the bitterness that an IPA is going to have, especially a double IPA. The bitterness that I be used it says here is 85, so that is extremely high for a pale ale. So, and the brewers can categorize it however they want. 85 I be used is into the pale, into the IPA category, guys. So, once I get the cap off of this, I will tell you what I think, whether it's into the uh, pale ale category or if it's an IPA category. Uh, it's not a strong, it is not American strong now, guys. Uh, I just have to chuckle sometimes to keep from saying something that people are going to call me out on later. But some of these crack smoking monkeys, uh, well, let's just leave it at that. Uh, it says 8.3% on, the, on uh, rape beer where they're calling it a strong ale. It says 8% on the bottle, so I believe the bottle instead of the, uh, these guys here. And over to uh, Beer Advocate, they're saying it's an 8%er also, but they've also got a category as an American Double slash Imperial IPA. Not usual to have a pale ale with that many IBUs. So, and it doesn't have it on the bottle here, guys. It does have 8% here. And it's got the date over here, which is 0729 of 2015. But I don't see any IBUs listed here. So, let's uh, go over to the uh, food pairings. And uh, this is the American Double Imperial IPA. Cuisine is barbecue. Uh, the cheese is a pepper Monterey, pepper jack, sharp blue, your more pungent cheeses. And the meat is game, grilled meat. They have salmon, I'll add, uh, well, grilled meat's already in there. And they put that in the, on the doubles. Glass for a snip or two of oversized wine glass. It's got my favorite glass today, the Simon Beer Glass. And it says it can be set up for long periods, but I wouldn't do that. This this is probably a hot forward double IPA or a double pale ale. I, I can't recall the last time I had a double pale ale that had that much bittering units in it. Uh, to me, that's into the IPA category, guys. So let's get the cap off of this, and I'm curious to see where this one ends up. Nice hiss. Big hiss on this one. This was sent to me by Mike. Uh, I can't get uh, Revolution uh, Beer. Uh, they're out of uh, Illinois, guys. Uh, around the Chicago, Illinois area. So let's get this. This is a bomber. It's a 22 ounce. So there's enough to share what I intend to do. And let's go down the center and get just a little bit of a head generated here, if it will. All right. About a finger of head on that pour. That's a little redder than your typical pale ale. A uh, little deeper amber color, almost to the copper copper color. And I can see the bulb right through it. 
Uh, it's a little more yellowish down here and here in the thin part of the glass, but very copper colored there. Good looking beer, a lot of bubbles streaming up. Let's get a nose on this one. Wow. Smells like an IPA, guys. It really does. I'm getting a nice hot forward presence to this. I would definitely would not sell her this beer. And this one was done in, in, in July, August, September. We're in two months. Not quite two months because it was done at the end of July. About six weeks. I'm reviewing this on the uh, 17th of September. So about six weeks in the bottle on this one. So it still should be fairly fresh. Nice citrusy. I'm getting some pine and hints of grapefruit. Some tropical fruit notes in there. Lighter fruits. Very hot forward. Very hot forward. Uh, let's see how much bitterness. With 83, I don't know if I would consider this a pale ale. Uh, this may be into the IPA category. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, Mike. Thank you, brother. It's a little softer on the back end. They've used a lot of malt, evidently, to brew this 8%er. And they have not used a lot of bittering hops. It's kind of sweet on the back end. Not, not near what a barley wine or anything like that would be. But still, it doesn't have that big, huge, bitter back end that a lot of the double IPAs have. Some of them are 100 IBUs and even bigger. It's very nice. Yeah, like I said, I reviewed their anti-hero a while back, a year or two back, and I thought it was pretty tasty. Matter of fact, when uh, when Mike sent me these, he actually sent me another one of those. So I may re-review that one too. So uh, I can't get their their beers here. So uh, I wish I could. They seem to do some really tasty stuff. Definitely a pronounced hop presence to this. Very hoppy for a pale ale. But it doesn't have the big, bold bitterness to go with that. Even though it's 83 IBUs, it tastes more like a 65 or a 70 than an 83. It's not bitter on the back end as I was expecting it to, expecting it to be. Very sweet. Very easy drinking for an 8%er. Very well made beer. Very nice. I like it. Well, let me take it back and pour her a glass and uh, sip on this for a little bit. Uh, seems to be fairly impressive, guys. Uh, the uh, the brewery seems the brewer or at the brewery seems to know what he's doing. They do some really good stuff. And these guys are, like I said, out of Chicago, Illinois. So uh, a lot of good beer uh, companies up there. Uh, you guys that's in the Chicago area, you know that uh, if you're into craft beers, there are quite a beer, quite a few beers that are e that are either done there or distributed to there, either from the Midwest or other places, that are really tasty. So, but let me take it back, sip on it for a while. I'll come back and do the final token grade. I'm liking it so far. All right, guys, I'm back. Been sipping on this probably about 35, 40 minutes or so. The other half loved it. I did too. Uh, very nice double pale ale. It doesn't have the bitterness to associate it with an IPA even though it's got a, according to uh, rate beer, of course they've got it at 8.3 where it says 8.0 on there so don't know if 85 IBUs is exactly correct for this beer. It doesn't have it on the bottle. I would like to see that on the bottle. And it does not have it. So uh, would like to see that information on there, just uh, just for just for the whale of it. Anyway, uh, the uh, the beer is pretty damn tasty. It's got a very nice citrusy. I'm getting some grapefruit and some pine in there, a little bit of dankness, very citrusy, some lighter tropical fruit notes. Uh, very very nice, very nice. Eight percent. I'm not getting that alcohol. Very well made. It's a very, very tasty beer. So let's do the final chug here. 
got a wonderful aroma. It really does. The aroma reminds me of a, a, a very nice double IPA. I mean, it's, it smells like a double IPA on the nose. If I was blindfolded, I would swear that it was a double IPA. Because it's got it. It's got it going on. Very easy drinking for an 8 percenter. Wow. I can't believe how well the alcohol is hidden in this beer. It just tells me how well that it's made to be hidden that well. I mean, I've had stuff that's way boozier than this at 8%. And this is not. Uh, you could get in trouble with this beer if, if you were drinking this at a bar and didn't know what the ABV was on it. Very nice. Very nice, guys. Uh, for me, it's a 9 out of 10. If I was putting a rating on this, it would probably be a 97 or a 98. It's uh, pretty tasty. It is damn tasty. So, Mike, thanks a bunch for sending me the uh, Revolution uh, Brewing Beers that you sent. Um, I'm sure they are all going to be winners. Uh, and like I said, guys, earlier, I, I may re-review the Anti-Hero since he sent me one of those. So, uh, Over to Beer Advocate, they say 90 in the outstanding range. It is an outstanding beer. It's pretty freaking awesome. It's pretty tasty. And over to uh, Red Beer. Red Beer says 98 overall and 96 in the style. I would I agree with that wholeheartedly. That's about where I would put it, guys. A, a 97 or a 98 in, in, in the scale. So, not quite a 10, but it is kicking on the door. So, uh, and if you say, oh man, that's a 10 beer, I wouldn't argue with that. I mean, beer tastes are subjective. If you think this is a 10, uh, I would not argue with that whatsoever. But to me, uh, I'm, I'm going to stick with what I'm saying. Uh, I think it's a 9, but it is, it is damn close to the 10. I uh, would like to see the IBUs printed on the label uh, for our information. And to be, get something accurate, because a lot of times you can't depend on what Ray Beer or Beer Advocate says. So. They, they try to keep up with so many beers, and a lot of times the breweries will change the recipe and the alcohol will change. So what they have on there, they got the right, both the sites have the right picture of the bottle and then the label on there. But they've, they've got 8.3% uh, on the bottle. This year's bottle has 8.8%, uh, 8%, so I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not familiar enough with the brewery to, to know whether they brewed something. Uh, maybe last year's was 8.3 uh, or whatever, I'm not sure. So if you get had this one from... Uh, Revolution Brewing. This is their double fist, double pale ale. Let me know what you think of it, guys. I thought it was pretty damn tasty. I enjoyed this one. Very nice. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for stopping by. Come on back tomorrow. We're going to see what's in the fridge. See you then.